this is John from caveofprogramming.com and this is a beginner's tutorial on arrays in Java and in the last tutorial I actually said that we would look at classes and objects this time but I completely forgot about arrays so this time we're gonna um, gonna it's gonna be the first of several tutorials in which we look at arrays so just to recap, um, I can create a variable that can hold an int like this. Let's say int values equals 7. And um, there's a really important distinction that we need to make now between um, value types and reference types in Java. The anatomy of what's going on here is that um, when I type int, um, which is a primitive type in Java with a lowercase letter here, I, I actually mean create enough memory to hold an integer, 32 bits to be precise, and, and here I'm saying and put some value into that memory. So this is like a bucket that's big enough to hold an integer. Now I can actually create a variable that can refer to a whole list of integers by saying int array values um, and again I'm just choosing an arbitrary name here and I'm calling it values with an S instead of value because there's going to be more than one of them um, but that's you know I could call this um, not plucker or whatever I liked and now the anatomy of this is it's quite different here because this does not actually hold any integers it can't it can merely refer to a list of integers so when I type this it's not like creating a bucket, it's like creating a label. Technically this is a, a value type, a value variable, and this is a reference type, a reference variable. This is a reference, this is a value. Um, and now the next step of course is I want to actually allocate some memory uh, which I can put some integers into. So I can say values equals new um, int array and in these square brackets which represent the array I can type the number of integers that I want values to refer to I'll say for example 3 and what's going on here is I'm saying point this reference at this stuff and this stuff uses the new keyword to actually allocate some memory and the amount of memory that I'm allocating is enough to hold 3 integers um, now you might be wondering, okay, what are these integers? Because I'm not actually referred to any values. Okay, here's a value, but where are the values here? There aren't any. Well, if I I can refer to the first integer in this list of integers, um, this array of integers technically, by saying values, and then I open a square bracket, and Eclipse is putting the closing square bracket for me automatically and in there I type um, the number in the list that I want to refer to and the values are, are numbers starting at zero so usually when you when you number a list yourself you start at one you go one two three four five but usually in programming the first in the list starts at zero and by the way that creates what we call the off by one problem which is that if you have a list of three things, the first one will be zero, and so the last one is number two. And it's the same um, kind of problem that we have with centuries, because the first century started at year zero, and so the 20th century starts at 1900, and um, every year in the 20th century starts with 19, which can be a little confusing. Same problem here. Um, so if I run this program now, I actually get zero because Java, unlike C++ for instance, is kind enough to give um, all values in arrays a default value. But of course I can I can put my own values in there. I can say values naught equals um, 10, let's say. And if I now display that, values naught, then I get 10. Um, uh, and you're still seeing the uh, original value here before I changed it. And we could print out um, values 1 and of course the last value 
is values 2. And these values that I haven't set yet are going to be, of course, 0. But I can set them. I can say values 1 equals, I don't know, 20. Values 2 equals 30. And if you try to refer to values 3, you'll get um, your program will crash with a, a handy exception that will tell you that you've done something wrong, which is quite handy, um, because C++ would just fail silently, but Java is good enough to warn you if you refer to a value that's actually outside the list. Um, now, uh, some other things you can do with arrays. So here we've looked at um, setting values and getting values. And another really common thing to do is that you want to iterate through the array. That means go through each value in turn. And um, I'm going to show you just one way of doing that here using a for loop. And in the next tutorial, we'll look at another way of, of doing it. Um, so what you do is you say, let's have a, a loop variable. I'll, I'll call it i, and I'll set it to naught to start with. And I want i. I want the loop to keep looping until i is equal to the um, one less than the last value in the array. So the length, the um, in Java, the size of an array can be found by referring to the dot length variable. Each array knows how long it is in Java, and um, the number of values in the array is stored in this dot length. Um, variable and then I'll increment i every time I go around the loop and now in here all I have to do is say let's say sys out values uh, and I'll put i in the kind of array index brackets here and then when I run this it's going to go through each of the values in my array in turn um, and um, one last really handy thing that we can do um, to initialize an array at the same time as declaring it is I can say int array, uh, let's call it um, numbers for example, and then instead of allocating the memory and then specifying the values, I can specify the values just in a list in curly brackets here, let's say for example 5, 6, 7 of course you could have hundreds or thousands of values and then once again I'll iterate through them I'll say i less than numbers dot length and notice um, i is never equal to numbers dot length because numbers dot length will be 3 and if I refer to numbers 3 that will be outside the array which is no good because the last one in the array has index of 2 because we started numbering 0 and I'll say here um, i++ plus plus again and then I'll do sys out again numbers and of course you could change the numbers here as well as just accessing them if you wanted and if I run this we get 567 okay so um, we're going to look at arrays a bit more next time because it's um, a big subject and we've kind of covered a lot of material in this tutorial we've looked briefly at value and reference variables um, and lots of array stuff and the best thing to do um, to get your head around this is just to have a play with it yourself and try accessing arrays and creating arrays and changing um, numbers in arrays and the next time we'll look at um, string arrays and uh, another way of iterating through an array um, so join me again for, for tutorial number 11 and until then happy coding